So you bought a big green egg. You're ready to get out and cook. But you're looking at all the parts and pieces, and you're trying to figure out what configuration should I use? Well, this video is for you. Hey, welcome back to Cobb's Q. Hey, look, a lot of people keep asking me, how do you set this up? How do you set that up? You did this great pork butt. You did this brisket. You did these pieces of salmon. But how did you configure the egg to do all of that? And, and after a lot of conversation and a lot of drawings and a lot of pictures being sent back and forth and texts, I decided, why not? This sounds like something really good to put a video together. So if somebody wants to do something, they can follow along. So this one we might actually divide into chapters. So later on, if you want to set your egg up in a certain configuration, you can jump straight to that chapter. So with that said, let's get busy. We're going to pull out a couple of the different items. We're going to go over them, go over some of the accessories and different ways to light the egg and clean the egg. We're going to start off with just the basket itself. Now, when you first get your egg, you're going to have a cast iron grate that you can place your charcoal on with the holes to allow the air to come up underneath. Mine cracked in about four or five months. Then I bought a kick ash basket and the kick ash basket lasted for about two years and then it rusted. Finally, I picked up the newest big green egg basket and this is great because with this basket I can shake. Everything falls down below and then I can set this aside for now, cleaning it after you've shaken out the ashes. This is really the easiest. I have a Ryobi vacuum cleaner that the battery for all my tool sets fits this. So we're simply going to turn it on and suck it out. So now let's talk about lighting the grill. Now for years I've used these Rutland fire starters and actually they work fantastic. And it all depends upon what type fire you want as to how many of these Rutlands that I put in and then simply use a benzomatic lighter. For a low and slow, I put two blocks in. And granted there's more charcoal in here for an extended period of time, but two will get a nice low and slow fire so I can get up to around 200, 220. For grilling around 350 degrees, I use three and I separate them around about equal distant in a triangle. And um, that, that typically brings the egg up to around 350 at a fairly decent rate. So for cowboy cooking with high heat, when I want to get over five, 600 degrees, I'll put five to six of them in here and I'll keep them on one side just so I can grill the steaks on one side at high heat and then bring them up at a higher level to finish off with butter. So as I talked about during the ribeye video, I like the Rutlands and I don't have one of the really nice torches like other people do. Or do I? Oh yeah, baby, this is going to be fun. Now let's talk about probably one of the most versatile tools Big Green Egg came out with when cooking. And that's their expander system. This is fantastic. We have the lower holder here. We can put our racks in and do a standard grill. Just grab the handles, everything comes up, turn around, place it on the egg. We can also lower a grate and place one high. I'm going to smoke pork butt. I have my plate setter. Place on the racks. And now I can pick the whole thing up, place it in the egg, and I'm good. Now, if I need to attend the fire for any reason in the beginning before cooking, I don't have to remove the grate, then remove the plate setter. I can pick everything up. Now, let's say I'm doing multiple pork butts. I can fit two on this grate, but what if I have another? This is really easy. The top portion of the expander set comes in and locks into your top grate. And then we have another grate that fits on here. What this does, it allows you to slide it back, it holds, and you can slide it again. I've been able to fit four pork butts on the egg using this method. Now let's talk brisket. A lot of people say that brisket on an egg needs to go fat side down to keep the meat protected from the high heat of the egg, that's the fire underneath. I don't like that presentation. I prefer mine to be fat side up because I think the brisket in the end looks better. But again, I am concerned about that. The plate setter that fits into the egg doesn't cover as much of the fire as what I'd like. But what I discovered was if I buy their 
deflector systems that come in half moon shapes and I place those in here I have much better coverage on the sides but there's still a hot spot right in the middle due to the hot spot I have a one inch tray and this one inch tray also catches all the drippings and if I want to put water in here I can do so and finally I have the grate for the uh, brisket to sit on top of so that's the configuration I use when I'm cooking brisket now let's say I'm doing wings or salmon this is where I'm going to use the bottom I will take the top section after putting in the grates just so it has support notice the plate setter is no longer in and here I still have direct heat but the meat is raised up higher so I don't burn the chicken and with the cedar plank on here I can place the salmon and again is raised so I found that this configuration works best for chicken wings as well as salmon so now let's say we're having a large party we got a lot of people coming over and we want to do a stir fry it, obviously we can cook the steak on the egg as we cook any steak but the rest of the stuff is kind of a pain and some of the different things that they have but the green egg came out with a carbon steel wok and this fits right in this so when it's in the egg you got high heat and you can do a really really great stir fry in this now if you've got the large big green egg this almost covers the circumference if you got the xl like i do you got to be careful because the flames will come up around the edges so be cautious but it is fantastic for doing stir fry all right i do two different things when i'm doing steaks i have two different options one of them i can use something called grill grates and they will make grates customized to your egg right now i've only got three of the four in place when these get really hot they will sear perfect diamond marks into your meat so this is an option that a lot of people can use and i find that it works really really well if i wanted to i could lower these grates down below and then stick this down here and you would get even closer to the flames next option we're going to get rid of this completely now we're going to take the top piece alone but we're going to flip it upside down. We're going to take an 18 and a quarter inch cast iron grate, put it on top. Then we can take this over to the egg. We can set this on the egg in this configuration. Now we got cowboy cooking, but I will take one grate and I'm going to stick it up high so that once I finish the steak, I can bring it up top, place a butter compound, close the lid for a minute, and then bring the steaks off. Now let's talk about ribs. With the ribs, once again, I'm going to use the plate setter. I'm going to set one of the big green egg drip trays right in the middle. We'll set our top racks up and get them situated. And with the XL, I can fit three racks across, or if I need to, I can fit multiple racks in this configuration and then again just pick the whole thing up and transport it over to the egg this is why the expander system is so versatile you can do so many things and once you've got it set grab the handles and you can lift the whole thing to the egg without having to do it over the flames now let's talk about cold smoking cheese i've got a 20 inch pie pan actually it's 18 and then i have amazing pellet smokers I like to use the square one when I'm doing this, but you can also use a tube. Doesn't matter, whichever you have. The pie pan is to keep the heat off of the charcoal that's in the egg. So we're gonna take this right now, put it in the egg, and this is set right on top of the charcoal. We'll light that, let it go for 10 minutes, and once it begins to smoke, then we're ready to go. Now using the bottom set of the expander, we're gonna go ahead and have our plate setter in, have our grill racks on, we're gonna place the top section on in a standard grill configuration and get it in and then we're going to use a silicon grill mat it's got the holes to allow the smoke through we'll take the whole system over place that on top of the egg put our cheese blocks right up here we'll close the lid we're going to smoke it for an hour and a half we're going to flip them smoke them for an hour and a half we'll take the cheese off and we're good the final grill tool that i have is if i want to make taco el pastor or make euros we've got the basic configuration but then you can buy a tool called the Trompo King. Place the Trompo King here, place multiple layers in kitty corner positions all the way up, and then grill that way. 
All right, thanks for sticking with us. Finally, we're going to talk a couple of items that I find is very helpful when using the Ag or the Traeger. First off is the Thermapen 1. You can look these up online. You can see what multiple cooks use and, and all of the top rated cook chef shows. These are as accurate as it gets and it's very, very quick. Within a second, you can simply stick it in the meat. You read very well on the temperature gauge. This particular one also has an IR gun so you can find out what the temperature of a surface is. To know the internal temperature of your meat, as well as the ambient temperature in the ag, in the Traeger, the Meter Block Plus or Meter Probe, which is a single, is an option. This is great, and I can walk around the house and I'll know what the internal temperature is inside the meat, as well as the ambient temperature. Do I think it's as accurate as it could be? No, the Thermapen is definitely more accurate than what I found here. Unfortunately, this is no longer on the market, but this is my go-to, the CyberQ Cloud. This has three probes for meat, a pit probe, and a fan probe, and I can set to the top airflow to a certain level, and then this can control all night. I'll go to sleep after starting a brisket at midnight, and I won't wake up to 8 a.m., and I won't worry about a thing. This will send alarms if a problem happens. I can send a link to friends. They can watch the cook. They can watch the graph. It's pretty amazing. You need gloves. You see me today wearing these and you see how dirty they are. Whenever I'm dealing with grill equipment, you're going to get messy. So a good pair of gloves that you can get messy in and not mess up yourself, that's good. You would also want high temp gloves. These blue fires are on Amazon. And they're fantastic when you're dealing with high heat stuff. I can get down, I can pick up coals with these. At Scout Camp, I've picked up logs of fire out of the fire and moved them aside without ever feeling it on the hands. So I definitely recommend something like the Blue Fires. And finally, you want a nice, light cotton glove. And then you're going to go ahead and place your nitrile gloves over the top. Now when you're dealing with hot meat, such as pork, brisket, etc., that you want to pull off the grill, you don't want to wear these gloves because with these gloves, you're going to rip off that beautiful bark that you've set up. You put these on, you don't rip up the bark, but with the cotton liner, you also don't burn your hand. So you can go down to uh, Ace Hardware. I've seen them. I've seen them at Harbor Freight. You can find them online at Amazon, but it's just a simple cotton liner glove. And then you uh, stick the nitrile over the top. Two other items I would recommend is a very large uh, tin foil package. You're always going to be using tin foil. Doesn't matter what you're using, whether it's a Traeger and you're protecting your burner, whether it's the egg, maybe you just want to put it over the plate setter without an aluminum tray in there. Or if you want to wrap a pork butt, if you go down to Costco, you can buy this huge thing of tin foil. And I don't know how much it la costs. I don't recall, but I've used these for years. Uh, I probably replaced it twice in the last two years. You also want butcher paper for doing your briskets. You get your pink butcher paper. You can find it online at Amazon. You can find it online. There's Traeger brands. You can spend the money if you want to spend excess money, but I found that the ones right off of Amazon are just fine. And lastly, if you're doing pork, bear claws. Not only do you look like Wolverine, but when you're getting in there and you're pulling the pork, this is so much easier. Or you got kids, you hand it to them. Well, hey, thanks for sticking with us through this video. Um, we're hoping that maybe this kind of helped you as you're deciding what tools to use when you're trying to do the different cooks on the big green egg. Sometimes it can be confusing and hopefully we've kind of stepped through some of the various options that are available to you to make your cook easier. Uh, thanks again for joining us. Uh, please click on like please click on subscribe. We're definitely going to bring more content to you. Uh, unfortunately, I can't put active links in the description yet. I don't have a thousand subscribers and we haven't hit enough hours. So you could help us by doing that, but I'll try to put descriptive enough information down there so that you can find some of the items that we're using. Thank you again for taking the time out of your day. We really appreciate that. Have a wonderful day.